Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back. I was thinking the other day about typewriter collecting and typewriter collections, and this thought came up because I have a collection of about 30 typewriters, and I really don't have any more room in my house for any more, yet I still have the desire to collect. And so for me, the question was, what's the minimal typewriter collection that would satisfy all my requirements? Keeping in mind that the minimal size collection is probably much smaller than what I currently have. But for you, if you ask yourself that question, you might come up with a different set of criteria than mine. So let's talk about that today. Stay tuned. As a typewriter collector, your requirements for what constitutes a minimalist complete collection are going to be entirely different from my requirements. You might be a collector of historical machines or machines from a certain historical period, or you might be interested in machines of a certain brand or design aesthetic, or you might be interested in them for other reasons different from my own, or maybe specific models. What I consider a minimalist complete collection is having typewriters in a wide variety of types and styles and giving me a wide variety of typing experiences. And for me, this is kind of important because I enjoy different typewriters, wide variety of typewriters, much more maybe than a lot of collectors. I enjoy the thermal typewriters. I enjoy the big upright manual standards. I enjoy the type bar electrics and of course the medium size and small manual portables. I like having a wide variety of different kinds of typewriters in my collection and so that's kind of informed what my standards are for the minimalist complete collection. And so I've defined six categories of typewriter that satisfy my requirements. First of all, the standard typewriter. This is the full-size upright desktop typewriter. This is the typewriter that is the classic big typewriter that you always see in old movies and ads. These are the kinds of machines that a serious writer, a professional writer, would have most likely used back in the heyday of typewriters. There's something about a full-size standard machine, the quality of the materials, the way they're designed, how they operate, the touch and feel of the machine. They're just just super rugged and they just keep running and running and I think it's really essential to have one of these in your collection. The next category is the largest category of typewriters I believe and that is the medium sized portable. Of all the collecting going on in the typosphere these days I would say the medium sized portable represents the largest number of typewriters and probably the largest number of typewriters manufactured perhaps throughout the entire age of the typewriter was the medium sized portable. So these will often give you a quality of typing experience very much in line with a full-size standard machine, but with the added advantage of portability and a storage case, a carrying case, where you can carry it and also store it, unlike a full-size standard machine, which you really can't easily store anywhere. Not every medium-sized portable will satisfy you in terms of all the capabilities or the quality of experience of a standard. A lot of times they did have compromises in their feature set over a full-size typewriter, but they were often very much equivalent to it, and you could easily get by with one of those. And I think for my minimalist typewriter collection requirements, I certainly want a medium-sized portable because there are so many good machines in that category. The third category is going to be the lightweight or ultra-portable category, and I think it's essential to a complete collection to have at least one of these because there's things you can do with a lightweight portable that you just can't do with the bigger machines which is put them in a shoulder bag or a backpack and truly carry them long distances. They're light in weight they're easy to pack and take with you. You can lug a medium sized portable with its handle from your house to your car, from different rooms of your house, from the car to some other place, but you really can't comfortably carry them very far. But a ultra portable, 
you can pack it away in a bag and you can truly carry it with you long distances and that makes it a unique tool for the kind of writing that you might want to do away in certain different places, maybe on vacation, on holiday. There's something you can do with an ultra portable in terms of its portability that you can't do with other machines. And also they take much less room to store in your home. And that's a factor to consider as well. Well, the next category is the Type Bar Electric. And the Type Bar Electric will often give you the features and the quality of writing experience of a standard typewriter, but with the ease of use, the low finger strength of a computer keyboard. They really are the best of both worlds, and there's no surprise that so many professional writers over the latter half of the 20th century used electric typewriters because they do give you a super fast typing experience. You can easily type very fast on them, and of course they do require an electrical outlet to operate, but it is essential, I think, if you want to have that complete typewriter experience to have a good Type R electric machine. And now related to the Type R electric but unique in its own category of course is the IBM Selectric. I'm making the IBM Selectric its own category because there are things it does that a Type R electric doesn't. So you can type really fast on both a Selectric or a Type R electric. I think speed of operation they're both great but what the Selectric gives you obviously is interchangeable type elements and collecting type elements is another side hobby unto itself. Also, depending on the type of Selectric you choose, you can have those with lift-off correction ribbons. So now you have the ability to have correctable print that looks really good. The final category is electronic typewriter, and specifically for me it is a thermal typewriter. And I'm skipping over the category of daisy wheel electronic typewriter because I think as far as interchangeable type elements and lift off correction, the Selectric offers the same thing. Daisy wheel typewriters do offer, I admit, an electronic memory in a lot of the later ones. So they were like a hybrid between a typewriter and a computer or word processor. That could be its own category, but for my purposes and my own collecting, I prefer to make that category the thermal typewriter. The reason why is because they offer this unique capability of very quiet operation, especially in a domestic situation late at night when you want to do some writing directly to paper without making much noise. And secondly, they're battery operated and quite portable. You can easily put them in a shoulder bag or a laptop bag and carry them places. So they have this unique portability, quiet operation, and many of them do have this electronic document correction editing capability that's the uh, daisy wheel typewriters had as well. So this kind of satisfies both of those requirements. I'd like to talk briefly about which machines that are currently in my collection would fulfill those categories. So first of all, we start, of course, with the standard typewriter, and I currently only have one, which is the Royal KMM. I've been quite happy with it. I really can truly fast touch type with it. It is a workhorse machine. The Royal KMM currently fills that category. If I didn't have a Royal KMM, which machine would I like to get as a standard? Well, I really think some of the Underwood 5s and 6s is a really great machine. If you can find one that's been reconditioned properly, those are wonderful machines, so I would go with either one of those also. The biggest category of machine here now in my collection, and probably in yours as well, is going to be the medium-sized portable. And it's really difficult to select just one medium-sized portable from my collection because there are so many favorite machines. But in order to do this properly, I'm going to have to make some caveats. If I can only have one medium-sized portable, it has to have one and a half line spacing, it has to have a small typeface, and it has to have a bichrome setting. So given those requirements, it kind of eliminates a lot of the American-made medium-sized portables for my collection. And that leaves Hermes, Olympias, Olivetti's, 
And I think I've got to go with the Hermes 3000 and probably of the three that I have, I have one from each era of Hermes 3000. Probably the middle era is the best condition one in my collection. I would go with that one for the middle size portable, keeping in mind that this is also eliminating that wonderful Smith Corona Silent Super that fulfills all those requirements except it doesn't have half-line spacing. And so now we get to the lightweight or ultra-portable category. I would say my ultra-portable collection comprises only three machines, which is the Roma Calibri, the Olympia Splendid 33, and the Royal Mercury. So of those machines, the Royal Mercury probably is in the best condition and has the most factory, new, precise imprint. The type alignment is just perfect. It has uh, all new rubber from JJ Short. Its only shortcoming is it has a standard Pika typeface, even though it is a one and a half line space machine. So I think I'm going to go with the Olympia Splendid 33. I absolutely love the touch or the feel of it mechanically. It is a smaller tie face. Unfortunately, it is a single color. I have to choose from what I have currently. I would make it the Splendid 33. Okay, the third category is going to be tight bar electrics. I have a number of those in my collection and those that fulfill the requirements of smaller tie face and one and a half line space Spacing, it really only comes down to the Olympia Reporter. That's the probably one of the newest machines in my collection. I think mine was made in the early 1980s, if I remember, maybe 83. Probably the newest typewriter in my collection. It doesn't have the style and the looks of the 5TE Smith Corona Electric Portable. It was very difficult to choose between that and the Olympia Reporter, but the Olympia Reporter has one and a half line spacing, and that to me is kind of important. As far as the IBM Selectric, I have one of those, and that's the one I would pick, and that's the one I've chosen, which is the first model of the Selectric, which is the so-called Selectric 1, or 721 is my version. That's the early body style. It is the narrower platen size, and it is the cloth ribbon cartridge type system. And my ribbon cartridge, I've taken it apart and installed a fresh Baco red-black ribbon, so this particular style style of Selectric does not have built-in correction, lift-off correction, but it has a bichrome cloth ribbon capability, and that's what I'm using, and I really love it. The thing about the IBM Selectric, and the reason why it gets its own category, is obviously because of the type elements. You collect the type elements, and you have an entire collection of different font styles that you can use, and that's the real benefit of having a Selectric as a category. Okay, so then we get down to the thermal typewriter, and that's an interesting category. I think I'm going to have to go with the Canon Type Star 220. That's the newest thermal in my collection, and it also has the darkest imprint of any of them. Even on the really thin, inexpensive fax paper rolls, it prints really darkly. And so that satisfies the requirement for a very quiet, portable battery operated solution for typing. Well, it's one thing to say that I've defined a minimal typewriter collection. It's another thing to actually have only six machines in your collection. And I certainly have more than that. I have 30. So there are some machines in my collection that I really like, but probably aren't necessary. And so if I was forced to downsize any further, those machines I would have to consider parting with. But for now, I kind of know through experience and time what really satisfies my desire with typewriters. And I like to have this wide variety of typing experiences. You know, I love the experience of typing on a really nice standard machine. You just can't beat the performance and the feel of a standard machine. But I also like the idea of a well-made medium-sized portable that feels almost as good as a standard but it's portable and it's storable not only can you carry it places in its case but you can store it in the closet in different places because it has a case that makes it stackable 
And then, of course, the ultra portables are always fun. Sit somewhere comfortable, put it on your lap, type with it, take it to a coffee shop or whatever. And then there are times when I really like just having the Selectric and being able to choose my type element. Gee, what kind of typeface would I like to use today? and having that really rapid typing capability. And then the type bar electrics, how great are those? They really are better than the standard typewriter in terms of strict workhorse typing because there's less fatigue on your fingers and as fast as you can type, they'll keep up with you. You could probably type 100 words a minute and they will keep up with you. And the amount of force required is minimal. It's essentially like a computer keyboard if you want to think of it in those terms. So really rapid typing capability, either the Selectric or Type R Electric, and it's nice having both because they both do different things, right? And then, of course, I love the thermal typewriters. What can you say? They're just nifty little devices, truly portable and really quiet. It's fun going through and figuring out what you really like in a typewriter collection. Now, for you, your needs might be completely different than mine. You might not want that wide variety of different kind of machines like I have in these six categories. So whatever your criteria is, why don't you uh, drop a note down below and let me know what you like in a typewriter collection. Let's have a dialogue about this. In any event, I wish you the very best. I hope you stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.